Okay, so welcome to the last uh, live discussion session. Uh, so we have covered uh, everything. So I believe at this point uh, you have you are done with all your assignments and all the assignments are also evaluated, right? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, so because this is the last uh, uh, meeting, you can ask anything from uh, all the things that we have discussed so far, uh, including the assignments. Um, Sorry, in assignment two, there is a question like I have posted in the chat. Okay. Okay. So let me go to that. So assignment two. So this is week two, right? Week two. Uh, week two, this is question two. Which question is that? In question two, third one, sir. So, third part, okay. Yes, let me just project the screen so that uh, everybody can see. It's not the screen that we want to show. Yes, sir. Mm. Which screen do you see? Do you, uh, can you see the, the questions? Yes, sir. We can see the question. Okay, so I think then uh, so. Uh, so you are talking about this question, right? The third part. Perform iterative elimination of the dominated yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, okay, so let me see. The answer says LCRB is the order of elimination. Uh, so, what is the question? Yeah, is it the question that uh, whether this is the unique? Uh, uh, Elimination order, or do there exist any other elimination order as well? Elimination order, sir. Yeah, so I think uh, it is uh, if this answer is correct, LCR. So let's first see whether L is dominated, strictly dominated or not. Uh, clearly, this is strictly dominated by M, right? Because all these uh, uh, all these numbers are smaller than M of layer two. So uh, clearly you can remove L from, from the system. Um, and then it comes for the C is done because C is a uh, oh, C R. Um, yeah, so I think the confusion is regarding C, is it? Uh, the orders are how exactly I see R. Uh, so, A is first removed, and it says that C is removed next, right? So, the, uh, LCRB is the answer that is given in the in the answer sheet, right? Yes. Okay. So, C, I don't see. The, okay, yeah. So, C is uh, for player one, right? So, okay. So, let me just write these numbers down so that uh, I, I can explain it. Uh, on the jam board, so I will share the screen. So R, the values, and the squares are in C, two comma two, six comma eight, four comma three, four eight, four ten, sixteen, six, six, zero eight. And so okay. So let me just project my screen here. Easier. So the my uh, screen is visible now, right? Uh, the Jamboard screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, here, what you can see is that first it is removing L. So let me 
show how, how this is done. So because these numbers are, so when you are talking about this L, you are uh, looking at layer two. Layer two will remove from its uh, set of strategies L because these numbers are all strictly smaller than these numbers. So this was, um, uh, so M strictly dominates L, so therefore we can remove L. Now, once L is removed from the system, your, uh, your remaining game is only this. So in this game, you can see that for player one, this uh, strategy B strictly dominates, actually both these strategies A and B strictly dominate C, because for player one, now the utilities are zero and zero, and both these numbers are larger than that. So you can remove C as well. Now you'll have to, yeah, so now you'll have to focus on this uh, remaining part of this game. So where uh, we can clearly see that R is, uh, is strictly dominated by M because now in this game, you have 10, uh, which is larger than two, so for player two, uh, and eight, which is larger than two for player two. So player two will also eliminate R. This is the in the reduced game. So whenever you are eliminating, you are also reducing the game. That's the idea. And then finally, you can see the B is the last thing to go because for player one, uh, when there is only one strategy left for player two, A is strictly better than B. So finally, you end up in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, strategy profile, which is A comma M. And uh, you already know by the principle of elimination of uh, dominated, strictly dominated strategy that it is definitely going to be a, a pure strategy in Azure PMP, which it is. I mean, you can, you can also verify that six is larger than four and zero, eight is larger than two and two. Therefore, A comma M is a, a pure strategy in Azure PMP. So this is the way uh, the elimination is done. Um, so could you just clarify the need for MSNE? Um, because that was something that I was uh, just uh, con conceptually trying to imagine uh, in a scenario or something. Oh, mixed okay. strategy, national equilibrium. So mixed strategy, national equilibrium. So there are two reasons why we go for mixed strategy, national equilibrium. The first thing is uh, guaranteeing some uh, predictive, some predictive guarantees. Uh, so in games where we do not have pure strategy in Azure Equilibrium, what do we predict about those games? So one way, uh, as we know that uh, mixed strategy in Azure Equilibrium always exists, uh, we can say that uh, uh, there is another solution concept, which is actually a little weaker than uh, the pure strategy in Azure Equilibrium. Uh, that equilibrium strategy always exists, and uh, that could be a predictive guarantee for that game. Now, the other way of uh, looking at uh, this uh, mixed strategy in Azure Equilibrium is that uh, these players may be interacting not only once, but uh, multiple times, many times. So think about this penalty shootout game. Uh, the, the shooter and the, uh, and the goalkeeper are interacting uh, not in one game, but in multiple games. And uh, over uh, when you are looking at this uh, multiple occurrences of the same game, you can think of uh, what is the, uh, the chance. So uh, out of, let's say, n number of trials of the same game, how many times you are shooting to the left uh, or shooting to the right? So that would be considered as a probability of shooting to the left or right. So clearly, mixed strategy in Azure Equilibrium makes sense when you have repetition of the game. In one specific program, um, the, the mixed strategy in Azure Equilibrium will not make that much sense. So yeah, so that's that's one way of looking at it. The way you interpret probability in classical way is that you repeat the same experiment and how many times, if you just take the sample uh, count, how many times you have seen one outcome versus another outcome, that becomes the, the, the probability of uh, choosing that outcome. Got it, sir, okay. Um, so I had a doubt in week six in uh, Bayesian equilibrium, sir, in the assignments that we had. Um, so sir, so pardon, we... Excuse me. Yeah. Oh. Sir, can we go by week order, sir? Can we go to week three? Uh, okay. Uh, so week uh, six, right? So Nikita, is that... Uh... Yes, sir. That's the Bayesian equi equilibrium. Okay, okay. So, so let's go over weeks. That uh, is oh. a good idea. So let's go to... Week three first, and then we come back to week six. Okay. 
So B3 B. is second. B, sir. Uh, Nashi Club in that sense. Uh, so this question one, right? Question one, part B. Question one, part B, yes. Okay. Okay, so what is the question there? What is your question? We'll be having two, two things for mixing national equipment, sir. MSME, sir. We need to satisfy those two conditions, sir. Yes. So in that second condition, we need to satisfy the second condition, sir. Um, okay. Yeah, sir. No, so first of all, uh, whether this is an equilibrium or not, uh, that is so you. So let's say, of course, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium will exist, but uh, uh, whether this is a Nash equilibrium or not, I think you can verify this uh, in a in a little easier way, right? I mean, you all that you need to find out whether there exists a uh, let's say pure strategy of any of these players, which beats uh, the the expected utility of that player uh, when you are playing this Nash equilibrium, right? Sir, PSN doesn't guarantee MSN, you know, sir. No. Well, PSN is always a national uh, mix, mix strategy national program, but, uh, but there could be more mixed strategy national program. Here, the question asks whether this is a uh, mixed strategy national program or not. So, so, how did you approach it? I mean, I think I, instead of I solving it, you give me. The steps what uh, what you followed and then where where you got stuck. So like for being a MSNE, we have given two conditions, no sir. Utility of SI comma sigma minus i star greater than or equals to utility of i mm -hmm. SI comma sigma minus i star. So so what is the delta SI in this case? So what is the support for these two players? So initially, I have taken only one by two, come one by two, sir. Yeah, this, this, so, so this question actually, I mean, uh, this question does not ask you to find the Nash equilibrium. It is asking whether that this equilibrium is essentially a Nash equilibrium or not. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, should I check the first condition, sir? Um, yeah, For I mean, MSN. if it, uh, so, so the, the thing is that you will have to find out uh, where, so, so let's say th there could be only two answers. Either it is a Nash equilibrium, in which case it should satisfy all those necessary and sufficient conditions uh, of that uh, MSN characterization, or if it is false, then you will have a counter example, which will say that, uh, uh, this is not a Nash equilibrium because there exists a greater strategy for any of these players, or at least one of these players. So, sir, for this question, can you tell how it is false? Sir? Yeah, so, uh, so for that, let's uh, first uh, let's go step by step. So, what is the support for player one in this case? So Nash equilibrium first uh, needs to define the support. You will have to, so. If you want to find out what the Nash equilibrium is, uh, uh, then you will have to uh, search over all possible support profiles. So here, in this case, what is the support of, uh, of player one in this uh, claim to be Nash equilibrium? Support in the sense PSN, is sir? No, no, no. So there is a clear definition of support. You, you remember this term called delta SI? Sir, which is equal for all the no so delta is is only those supports the the strategies that their i their i has positive probability mass so essentially um this is the, uh, uh, these are those uh, strategies on which this player is 
uh, putting positive probability. So for all the other things, the the, uh, the strategies which are not in support, the player will never play or play that uh, strategies with probability zero under, under this uh, condition. So delta SI, so if you uh, go back to this uh, example, you see that for player one, there is, there is a zero for, for this third strategy. So uh, at least in this uh, strategy, mixed strategy profile, player one is not playing C with any probability. So therefore C is not in the support, its support is A and B. So support is just the, those outcomes, which is possible with possible, uh, with positive probability. Do you recall the, the definition of uh, uh, yes, yes. so A and B are the support of player one mm -hmm. and D and A and B are the support of uh, player one and D and D because that has positive probability for player two and that is under the support of player two. Now the question is uh, um, under this uh, so if it is a Nash uh, equilibrium, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium then it must be the case that uh, this expected utility of player one uh, under this uh, the under the strategies in this support should be larger than that larger than or equal to uh, the expected utility uh, for those strategies outside this support. Does that get satisfied here? How do you how should you check that? So remember the this one. And for all this, I'm trying not in the interaction. Do you remember this? This was one of the conditions for. Yes, sir. Second condition. Second condition. Let's start with that second condition whether that gets satisfied for player one. So. Is it true for player uh, player one? So this half and half for player two. The probability that for player two is half and half. I'll have to do this calculation. So four times half plus two times half. And about three times half. Yeah. So how do you how how do you calculate uh, this left hand side for player one? So consider one. So I'm considering S1. So in that case, S1 to be B and S1 prime to be C because C was outside the support and B was inside the support for player one. And sigma minus I, if I consider uh, I to be equal to one, so this is the case where I is equal to one, then sigma minus I is sigma two because there is only other uh, only one other pair. And it's, uh, uh, Sigma two is half comma half. Okay. Now, uh, what is the meaning of u one b comma half comma half? That means player two is playing half and half, and player one is playing b. So that means half times u uh, one of b comma what is that? D and e, right? So uh, b comma d plus half of u one. Uh, B comma E. This is the thing that we have to calculate, and that's exactly what I did. B comma D was four, 
and uh, b comma e was two. So together, this this is the uh, this is the left hand side. And if you want to calculate e one of c comma uh, c comma half comma half, that is, I'm calculating this right hand side here. So that is going to be half times three because now you are going to calculate e one of uh, c comma d. Because player one is now playing C and uh, plus half times half times four, which is Q one of C comma E. That is fair. clearly this number is larger, right? So here you have seven by two, and here you have six by two. So this inequality is violated, so therefore this cannot be a valid uh, mixed strategy nationally. So for this question, you don't really need to uh, find all the Nash equilibrium. You just have to provide one counter example, find a counter example, and that will be sufficient. Sir, second question two, sir. Week um, three, question two. two so uh, instead of chat, I suggest, I mean, I'm not able to see everything in, in one screen. So instead of chat, you can just unmute yourself and ask the question. That is easier for me to call. Okay, so week three, uh, which question? Question two, second answer. Question two, second one. That, that is the thing. So, so this is a long question. Set. Yeah, I understand you are asking about this one, right? Consider finding a Nash equilibrium in which yes. Adam uses a pure strategy and Smith mixes between two of its strategies. Clearly identify which strategy or strategies have positive probabilities uh, for each player. So what is the game? And I want to see that driving towards each other on one lane road, each player to the sentence between going straight and deviating left, deviating right. One player goes straight or rather deviates, then left or right. Okay. So the one who goes straight gets a payoff of six, while the other gets minus two. The player each player deviates to its left, or each deviates to its right, then each gets a single by the mean opposite directions. Both go straight, or uh, if one deviates to its left, or the other deviates to its right, then there's a crash, and they get a the offer. So first of all, how many strategies does each of these players have? So, I mean, again, I'm, I'm asking you, uh, how did you approach the problem? Where did you get started? Sir, I have done the first questions, sir, but I couldn't understand the second one. Uh, so, so for, for the first one, uh, how did you solve that? Yeah, you wrote down the, the game um, matrix, right? So, what is that? Yes, sir, matrix? I have done the matrix. One minute. So, player one has LS, sir. Player two has LS, sir. L comma L is zero comma zero. L tell row is. Okay, no, so just uh, give me the the numbers because uh, yeah, we have to look at those. So both these players have three strategies, right? Three three strategies, yes, sir. S L or left. Yeah. So let's say yes, I I have I'm writing them them down. So player one has L. Is straight left or right? Similarly, player one can also straight left. Or right. Now, what happens in the case when both these players go straight? They collide into each other, and everybody gets minus eight, right? Is that correct? I think minus four comma minus four. So yeah, so it says that if both go straight. Or if one deviates switch left by the other. So essentially, think about this. I mean, two cars are coming from different direction, either they can go straight, then they crash. 
and if one goes to the left one goes to the left and the other also uh, other goes to the right um, then essentially they, they also collide if one uh, goes to the right the other goes to the left then also they collide so yeah straight comma straight is essentially colliding and uh, here it is said that the first crash we each get a payoff of minus eight so straight straight uh, will certainly be minus eight minus eight in the other case if it is uh, left and the other player goes right then also they collide minus eight minus eight one right the other left this is also minus eight minus eight now what is the other left left Le left left is zero right right is zero uh yeah so left left should be zero comma zero right right should be zero comma zero now one goes straight and the other goes left or right the guy who de deviates gets a negative minus two and who goes straight gets uh, six okay so then the straight guy will get six the other two other two cases the other person will get minus two so similarly we have minus two six minus two six this is the game we use uh, so what is the your strategy match with you Liam? so there are many actually yes sir i think six yeah so for instance this is a nash equilibrium this is a pure nash equilibrium uh, and then what else um, ls this yeah so star this also, yeah so this is also a nash equilibrium this is also a nash equilibrium um, yeah, whatever. I mean, that's that's the mix. Uh, so that, that's a few. No, so actually there are only this four, right? Okay. Sir, four. Yeah, because I don't think. Yeah, so what I uh, uh, what I just mentioned. This one, uh, SL, SR. SL, RS, LS. Uh, yeah, so LS, RS, this two, and SL, SR. Okay, that's part one. Now your question is regarding part. So consider finding a Nash equilibrium in which Adam uses a pure strategy and Smith mixes between two of it in his strategies. Okay, it's making your things a little more focused. So yeah, so this is a symmetric game. So I don't really, it doesn't really matter. I don't remember who was Adam. So maybe this is Adam and this is Smith. The who player is Adam, the other player. So uh, clearly identify which strategy or strategies have positive probabilities for each player. Uh, okay. So you have to essentially look at all possible cases. So here, one of the advantages is that because this is a, uh, a symmetric game, um, uh, well, so here it has already been said that Adam picks one strategy. So we'll only have to iterate over the strategies, the singleton strategies for Adam. So what this question is essentially asking is that you use that, um, uh, that technique of, uh, uh, finding the mixed strategy in Nash equilibrium, but uh, your um, uh, support profile is limited because the support in that support profile only one player, uh, this uh, the first player, uh, has a singleton strategy set, and the other player has the strategies of two. So there may be S L L R S R. There are three possibilities for uh, uh, for um, for Smith. And uh, there is only uh, three possibilities, S, L, and R for M. We'll have to find out all these cases and in which cases um, there will be um, uh, the, the condition, uh, uh, the necessary and sufficient condition for a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium will be satisfied. That we'll have to find out. So what, what are those uh, conditions that, uh, that ensures that it's a mixed strategy? For mixed strategy Nash equilibrium to hold, 
uh, which condition uh, should be should be true. So, for instance, let's uh, let's say uh, we pick S and Smith chooses S and L. So, can that be a um, uh, can that have a positive probability? Can uh, all those uh, conditions get satisfied? So I think it is it is instructive that you do this calculation because uh, with this calculation side and we spending a, a lot of time. So all that we have to ensure just the thing that we did in the in the previous uh, um, uh, exercise as well. So if this is the if this is the support, right? So if S is the support for Adam and SL is the support for uh, for Smith, then two conditions need to be satisfied. So the, the thing is they. The uh, utility, okay. So condition one says that uh, the uh, the expected utility of that player should be same uh, over uh, over the uh, strategies in the sub for both these players. So clearly that is getting violated in this case uh, because player two has so if, if this is the support they expected. So this is with probability one. So the the only possibility for this player uh, if S L S and L are in the support, then this utility should have been same, which is not. So therefore, it, it clearly violates uh, that condition. Uh, so similarly, uh, for for S and R, if you pick that, that also has different utilities. Clearly, L and R are uh, uh, those strategy, uh, those uh, supports where the utilities are same for these players. Now that is not all. You will also have to consider the condition two. That is the expected utility of uh, both these players inside the support is uh, larger than uh, that outside the support, and that should hold for both these players one and two. So we'll have to look at whether the six is larger than the uh, all possible mixtures of, uh, of this uh, these two supports. You just do this calculation. So uh, the these two conditions that we wrote in the in the previous uh, example, EY, SI, sigma minus SI, should be same for all SI in delta of the sign and should hold for all agents. This is condition one. And the condition two is that U I SI sigma minus sign should be greater than the U I of SI prime sigma minus sign for all SI that is inside the support. And for all the side prime that is not in the same. We should also go for all of this. So find out when, uh, in which of the support profiles you have to iterate over all this, in which support profiles these two conditions get satisfied. And it turns out that uh, for this question, only S and L survives. Every if you pick any other support profile, there one of these conditions can be violated. Okay, so anything uh, from anything else uh, from uh, week three? Sir, question number four, sir, can you just give the approach? Find a Nash cooker in which it mixes between L and R and Smith. So I suggest that you, you are having a very kind of a common conclusion. I think uh, you should go back and uh, uh, check these two conditions, how these conditions are actually used when you are trying to find a mixed strategy in Ashikul field. In this uh, question, question four also, I can see a very similar. Uh, so this is question four of one. Question four of uh, question three, right? Uh, sorry, so question two, right? This one. Yes, sir. So find an Nash equilibrium in which Adam mixes between LNR and Smith mixes between two of his strategies. Print for Adam and Smith respectively the mixed strategies in the MSM uh, in an LSR and LSR format. Probability rounded up to this one. So this format is given primarily because to keep the sequence fixed. But yeah, the, the point is that we have to um, 
again to the same calculation, the one strategy. So mixes between L and R. So uh, your uh, yeah, so it, it is uh, fixing this strategy. So for clear Adam. Some some voice coming in. Can you can you please mute yourself if you are not speaking? So uh, here the uh, question says that your L and R uh, for player one L and R is going to be the support. And for uh, the other player, you can pick any support of size two. I think that is the that is the question. Also, uh, sorry, yeah. So mixes between two of his units. Print for Adam and Smith respectively. The mixed strategies in, uh, in the MS and in the MS. So uh, uh, this question is saying that uh, even in this reduced game, where Adam is choosing only L, L and R, and Smith is using the support profile to be SL, SR, or LR, there should exist one I mean, strategy in Ashley Equilibrium and you'll have to find it. Uh, so actually the question is only reducing your set space. Uh, I mean, if we ask you to find all the all possible mixed strategies in Ashley Equilibrium, then you will have to iterate over everything, all possible support profiles. Here we are fixing the, the support profile and you're asking you to find the mixed strategies in Ashley Equilibrium. I mean, there is nothing uh, very, um, tricky in, in this question. You just have to uh, uh, go over all the support profiles, three different support profiles for Smith, and check each of these conditions. Wherever that conditions get satisfied, that is going to be the mixed strategy initiative. I won't go over this uh, the details all over again. I think you can you can do it. You give okay. these conditions are known. Yeah, so I suggest that you uh, practice this because these are these are important. But uh, you, uh, you know, so once you know the process for one specific problem, you will get the clarity for all possible questions of the similar kind. Okay, so week three, I think is done. There is, is there any other question on week three? No, sir. So week four. So Pallak has a question on second price sale bid option, which is uh, much later. Yeah, speak three or four. So I'll come come to that option question when we reach that week. Uh, so week four, week five. If there is no question, we can go to Nikita who had a question on week six. Sir, week four. Can you just tell the approach for SPN is? Oh. Yes, sir. Just a rough approach. How to find an SPN? Yes, sir. For the given diagram. For this diagram. Yes, sir. So it is giving you for so this question is asked for a very specific case. So and can you ex explain for x equals to four? Uh, x equal to four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say it's equal to four. So then this becomes four comma four. So how do you, so what is the method that you apply, apply here to find the subpoena for fitness equilibrium? Through backward induction, I'll travel from the lift. Yeah. So, okay, so if, uh, so in this part, player two is the player. So if player two has these two choices between E and A, which one? Do you four comma four. 4 comma 4. It should pick F. So player 2 should pick the strategy F because that gives uh, player 2 a higher equilibrium. Okay. Yes. Okay. So at this uh, uh, history of the game, F is the uh, F is the uh, uh, Nash equilibrium to that of that sub game. So sub game reduced to this. Way. So what is the the Nash equilibrium uh, at this sub game? C. It is C because player two should in C gets ten and in D gets C. So you have already partially solved it. So player two will have a strategy of C F, 
okay? so that which gives you gives a player two the highest utility. Now, given that uh, player two has uh, will be playing C or F, what should player one do? If it plays A, then it takes this path and gets four. If it plays B, then it takes this path and gets four. Right? So if it is four, then there is a tie and uh, both these things uh, happen to be the subgame perfect Nash. That is the answer, right? So both A and B, they are part of the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. You, you can pick ACF or BCF, both are subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. For three, there is a clear in, uh, clear direction of going in that path because this will give a four, while this will give three. Okay. Is that clear now? I think this is the subgame for yes. uh, yes. the backward induction is uh, super simple, so there should not be any confusion. Okay. So question, uh, so week six. Which question is the, is the question we have? Yes, sir. So, so I had a question in um, just a minute, sir. So, uh, sir, in question two, I had a, uh, like a doubt in the B part because the A part had already been uh, sort of introduced in the video lectures, but the B part, uh, I was having a problem in uh, sort of reducing it. Um, so, yeah. Also, I think the part where, we, because we essentially integrate the utilities and then find, uh, uh, so so that part is still a little bit unclear to me. Uh, so if we could just go over that. So the following options, the first option is, uh, so this B has, there are three players who are waiting for a single indivisible item. The highest bidder wins and takes the second highest bid on the three meters, ties are broken in favor, favor of the lowest index meter. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so this is essentially writing that down. Um, utilities are the second highest. So this is the second price option, actually. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, is a patient Okay. Independent in the prior for each of the services. So yeah, so I think the uh, example. So it is. Uh, uh, I believe in the um, in the lectures there was uh, two players or three players. What was the example about? We did a very similar. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I think the A part is very similar to what we did in the. Um, that was pretty much from there yeah. we could. So here also the uh, uh, here the uh, the idea is very similar. I mean, you want to find out which one is the Bayesian uh, equilibrium. That means you want to find out uh, which of these alpha uh, i's will uh, will will actually fit that that definition of uh, Bayesian Nash equilibrium. So can can you just uh, tell me which mm, what did you try out and where did you get stuck? What was your approach to this? Um, so, uh, so, so basically, I uh, watched the video lectures for the A part uh, because that was very similar. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do think that my understanding of uh, this particular concept was is not really. Uh, uh, the best because I had an issue in the B and C part, which are, I guess, sort of like an extended uh, sort of part of the A. Like it's just changing a few things there. So the concept itself is something which I'm struggling with over here. Mm -hmm. So the Bayesian equilibrium says that you have all these priors uh, on, on these theta i's, right? Theta, uh, yeah. So you have a Bayesian prior on, the, on these theta i's. And when you take the expected um, uh, expectation with respect to that uh, prior, whatever you get is an equilibrium, is a Nash equilibrium, right? So, um, yeah, so here uh, the, the, uh, the question asks that this independent uniform prior, so everybody has the same uh, uh, zero one, uh, 
So actually, it should not be N01. It should be just independent uniform prior. N stands for normal, but yes, assuming that that's just a type. So you have a uniform distribution over zero and one. Now, you, uh, for when you are talking about from the player point of view of player one, uh, you are trying to find out what is that uh, uh, strategy, what is that alpha which maximizes its utility uh, for player one. So let me, I think, uh, I think uh, we can show the corresponding uh, mix thing, right? So you have that. Let's open that example. So, can you identify which one was the, the where that example was? Patient equilibrium. So this is for the option, and this is for the second example. So here you will have to, um, so we'll have to write just two conditions here because here um, you have not only integral with respect to theta two, you also have a theta three because there are three players. Here you had only two players. So there you will have to write another. So it's a little clumsy equation that uh, you your bit has to be larger than both this S2 of uh, theta two by whichever player two has reported and also whatever player three has reported. And in that case, uh, whichever is the, the max of those two things, that will come through. Right? You just have to do the do the calculations. I mean, uh, if, I, if I start doing this, I think it will be a very uh, long derivation. But uh, yeah, so the understanding is that, so what, what is this problem that this uh, player is trying to solve, right? So the player is, uh, so what are we doing here? Uh, if you go back to the, the definition of uh, Bayesian equilibrium. Definition. Yeah, so the Bayesian equilibrium is defined in this way. So that is, you will have to. Um, so uh, the both this left hand side and right hand side is not a function of theta minus size anymore. Right. So that that is because you have already taken the expectation when you are defining this ui sigma i star theta i and theta minus i star, you have already taken the expectation with respect to those theta i and theta minus i. Okay. So whatever the type, so in Bayesian game, the, the players have uh, two stages. So first stage is uh, where the, uh, the nature is choosing what types these agents have. So that is coming from some common prior and we are assuming that that common prior is known to us. And in the second stage, they might choose their strategies, which can be mixed strategy or a pure strategy. Now, when uh, in, in the Bayesian equilibrium setup, we just uh, look at player I's uh, uh, view, and this player knows its own time. The, uh, the, the actual realization of the theta I is known to agent I, and, uh, but it does not know the realization of the theta minus this of the other players. So what it can do is it can uh, take the expectation with respect to that theta minus i given theta i uh, and take that expected utility. And if that utility maxi gets maximized and this theta i uh, sigma i star, 
then it will, it will be called the Bayesian equilibrium. So when we are doing the calculation for uh, uh, for this uh, the other player, this uh, calculation. In the cell mid auction, we are looking at that uh, sigma i, right, which maximizes the utility for player i. Uh, given that we are assuming that the other player is choosing some alpha is there, right? So the strategies are very simple. It is just uh, uh, reporting that theta i multiplied by a uh, multiplier. Now at this point, we do not really know which theta uh, alpha two it will be. But let's say it has some alpha alpha two, and you'll have to find uh, write the expression. That is, for, uh, how you should uh, find this expectation. You are trying to find out uh, what is the payment that you are finally going to make. So I think the the easier thing to write is from inside out. So if you are the winner, you are making this. Uh, so this is the first prize option. Uh, so let's go to second prize option there. Uh, there you are looking at what is the strategy that has been chosen by the second player, which is going to be alpha two times uh, theta two. And theta one is its own utility. If this player wins, then it makes this amount of payment. Now, what is the condition under which it means? That uh, condition is B1 should be at least uh, larger than that S2 theta two. This is for player one. And that gives rise to this, uh, uh, I mean, if you rearrange this term, We'll get this in the body. Now, uh, this is as uh, the whole integral is just uh, in terms of one theta two. Now, when you do it for three players, what we have to do is theta one must be uh, so uh, this uh, theta one minus the max of s two theta two and s three theta three. That you will have to write down because you are essentially making the payment of the maximum of these two things. And you also become a winner when your B1 becomes the maximum, uh, uh, larger than that maximum, larger than or equal to that maximum. So that means that it will be larger than both of them. Okay? That is the uh, integral. And also the integral will run for both theta 2 and theta 3. So there will be a double integral here, and there will be theta 2 and theta 3. Now you'll just have to decouple all these things and do the calculation properly. And you will see a very similar thing. Most likely there will be two different multipliers uh, where you have this P1 is exactly going to be equal to uh, theta one, uh, uh, theta one. So P1 will be actually equal to theta one. So, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just uh, not doing that calculation. You do that calculation and let me know uh, if you get stuck. But I, I told you what, what will the, the principle. It will be a little messy calculation, but finally, what, what we know from, uh, from the results, so that uh, example essentially shows you that even for three or more players, if you uh, extend it for any number of players, the, finally, the uh, outcome will be that the, uh, in, in the second prize option, the Bayesian equilibrium is where you report your uh, uh, type truth. That is the that is the conclusion. Yes, yeah, yeah, so related to this. Sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Related to this, my question was that can we have uh, some mechanism in which we change the tie breaking rule so that it's no longer uh, equilibrium in which they are reporting their true values. They report something other than their true values because of the change in the tie breaking rule. So yeah, you can you can do that also, but you will see that uh, uh, this this mechanism is uh, completely anonymous in, in the sense that it is not giving any importance to any of these players. The tie breaking rule is just for our convenience. This one is above two, two is above three. But um, if you even uh, make the tie breaking rule as three is better than two, two is better than one then all the things that you then also you will have the same conclusion that uh, reporting the bits truthfully is the best response it will not change um, yeah. it's not uh, dependent on the type breaking rule as long as you are using second price option the bayesian in the bayesian equilibrium um, the players will reveal their uh, types truthfully 
the beats will be there so sir in general in any mechanism design does the tie breaking rule not play any role in terms no, of that, that we cannot say no that we cannot say at least for second prize option we know that this is true but uh, yeah so for instance any mechanism uh, so if you change the order of the dictatorial so suppose you are running a voting scheme um, where you are electing one candidate and you have randomized dictatorship or sequential dictatorship let's say and you change the order of uh, those sequence of the dictators then the outcome will definitely change and this is not true in general okay sir understood Yes, sir. My doubt is clarified as well. Uh, I think I'll work okay. on the on the calculations and uh, yeah. Okay, so Pallak. Uh, okay, so you had this question actually. So can we come up with a tie breaking rule such that players will have an incentive not to bid their true valuation? Well, uh, no. So for a second prize option, second prize silver option, it is truthful. Uh, so it and it is not dependent on their. Uh, the way you are breaking the ties. Uh, it depends on which kind of option you are running. So if it is first price option, uh, certainly it is not truthful. It is not truthful. So in the equilibrium, you will not find players revealing their true types. But as long as you are using second price option or any uh, such kind of option. So second price option is a special case of the VCG option, right? You know that when you have more than one objects, uh, then uh, uh, that is VCG is more general and if you just re uh, retain one object to be allocated then the VCG option becomes a second price option uh, and in that VCG option also if you do the, the, the that calculation of Bayesian games uh, revealing true, true type is the best response for all these players. So, sir, in the same assignment, the next part was about uh, the third highest bid. If you go for the third highest bid, I just wanted to confirm the answer because some I'm how I'm not able to access it. So here, if you are going to make your true uh, valuation as the bid, that's not an Ash equilibrium, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the highest bid wins, and the third highest bid, uh, and, and pays the third highest bid. So third price auction is not a truthful option. So actually, uh, I think this, uh, because this was an assignment question, uh, the idea was that you actually will do this calculation and uh, try to find out the intuition behind it. But um, uh, well, in, in the final exam, this kind of a uh, exploratory kind of question will not, not be present. I can assure you that. The, the thing is that um, this, uh, uh, the problem of this example uh, demonstrates that uh, for the third price option is not going to be truthful. So therefore, you should not be revealing your types truthfully uh, under this, this situation. Only in second price option, uh, it is beneficial for them to reveal that. So even if you know that answer already, you can see that this is not going to be a Bayesian equilibrium. So which is, which is the answer. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, uh, for this assignment, I think it was instructive to do all these steps and to find out that uh, indeed this theta one, theta two, theta three, uh, that is alpha one, alpha two, and alpha three uh, to be equal to one is not an efficient uh, and uh, Nash equilibrium. Uh, that is what we wanted to have from this uh, exercise. Okay, sir, understood. Okay, so we are we have run out of time. Uh, any quick questions from the from the mechanism design part? So far, we have discussed only the. Only the uh, maybe we can take one or two questions from. I think no doubts from big seven eight nine. Sir. No doubts from eight nine. Okay. Later, ten or so. Yeah. So actually, this example we have discussed last night. It was a misunderstanding, but I think this was finally discussed. Yeah, this question is actually not, not that complicated. Uh, is 
for that fine maximizer, we fill the numbers for a fine maximizer. And then I fill the letter for the optimal option. Yeah, and also this was discussed in the last meeting. Okay, fair enough. So I think we have discussed uh, a sufficient amount of questions. Mechanism design part, uh, I think, is is a little easier than the uh, than at least the later part of uh, of the game theory. So Bayesian games and extensive com games. Uh, in in the uh, mechanism design part, we only look at simultaneous move games, even though there are certain uh, certain interesting uh, observations that we can make. Okay, so if there are no other questions from uh, mechanism design, we can we can stop here today. And all the best for your exams. Sir, we having exam pattern, sir. The exam pattern, I think, uh, did. Uh, 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 didn't um, Impetal uh, uh, say any um, any pattern? Uh, there will be a kind of a format. There will be a, a mix of short answer questions, some questions from your assignments, some questions from. So certainly, yeah. So you do all all the questions from your assignments because there will be some questions from the assignments. Uh, there will be some which are. Uh, just single answer type one, uh, just M MCQ, MSQ. There will be some questions which requires explanation which you need to write. So it will be a mix of all those. Uh, I don't exactly remember the marks distribution between between them, uh, but uh, yeah, so there will be a mix of all such questions. So something which requires just, uh, just a minute to just uh, sort of a recall kind of a question. If you remember it correctly, you just answer it. The assignment questions is something that you have already done in the past. So these are the easier, easiest parts. Then you have something which requires a little bit of calculation, some true false type of questions, or fill in the blanks type of questions. And then there'll be some longer questions which will require you to solve uh, some of these steps and write those things. Uh, so those are the um, non-objective type questions uh, which where you will have to write some answers. Yeah, broadly, this is what I remember. I don't, I cannot, cannot give you the exact marks distribution, but uh, the the final question will have a mix of all these kind of questions. Okay, so thanks everyone, and all the best. Uh, for the final